This is the AOC G2460PF and it's a 24 inch 1080p monitor. Thankfully the spec sheet is a bit more exciting than its name with a 144Hz refresh rate, a 1 millisecond response time and AMD FreeSync technology for reduced stutter and tearing in your games. I paired this up with the Asus Fury Strix and have been testing this over the last two weeks to find out if it's any good and whether it's worth your cash. Hey what's up guys and welcome to this video. So then this monitor has the potential to be a great little budget gaming monitor and as soon as you've got it on your desk it does a very good job of hiding that. It looks more premium than it should do. That's not to say it's going to be the most premium looking monitor because it's not. And if you tap any of the materials it does make a plasticky noise. But you've got a sort of brushed metal finish on the bezels which do a good job of making it look more premium than it is. The bezels themselves while they're not thin they're not fat either and they're pretty good for a gaming monitor and then you've got an AMD red style gaming strip down the bottom which obviously helps to indicate that this is a FreeSync monitor and if you look at the G-Sync monitor that's very similar to this one that has a green strip so it's basically Nvidia versus AMD. The stand as well is pretty nice. Uh, the base of it has scratched ever so slightly over the last two weeks and I don't really know how that has happened. There has been a cat walking about, so that might be how it's happened, but it is something to note. Uh, the stand has all the adjustments you will need, and if you want to switch it out for a different one, it's got a visa mount so you can do that as well. The buttons you'll find on the base of the unit, and then on the front you've got some little icons that tell you what they do. Connections-wise, we've got everything you need around the back. You've got DisplayPort, which is what you're going to want to use to get FreeSync, but then you've also got HDMI, DVI, and your legacy VGA. You've got the USB upstream port, and then you've got your audio in and out as well. So if you want to use something like a Chromecast, then you'll easily be able to do that as long as you've got something to plug the audio into. You do actually have speakers in the device as well, which is absolutely fine if you want to just use it for more like system noises, but for any serious use, uh, then you're gonna want to look at something else. Setting up this panel is fairly simple as well. The physical buttons are nice and easy to use. They're not the most premium physical buttons, but they certainly do the job. The menu system is slightly clunky, but once you've learned where everything is, it's very easy to use. And the only real problem I've run into using this monitor is that the brightness is ridiculously too high. To put this into perspective, the, my chosen setting was 2 out of 100. That's right, 2 out of 100. Anything above that, the brightness is way too high, so imagine what brightness 100 looked like. Absolutely ridiculous. But you can lower it to 2, and then that's an acceptable level, so for me it's not too much of a big deal but I have no idea why it's that bright. Um, actual image quality wise, it is very good. Very good for a TN panel. It's not gonna ever compete with some of the best TN panels because they're a lot more expensive and it certainly isn't gonna compete with some of the best IPS panels either. Image quality in games is absolutely fine and games like Far Cry 4 actually look surprisingly good. I was genuinely like, wow, actually for something this cheap, that does look pretty good. But if you want to look at images or you actually want to do some serious image editing work, have a guess. It's not at all appropriate and you'll find that the accuracy is off and the colours don't look very good either. Not the monitor to go for. But as soon as we get gaming we can start talking about AMD FreeSync and that 144Hz refresh rate. I've talked about this sort of stuff before and this monitor is no different. As long as you keep it in the FreeSync range, which unfortunately is only 48 frames a second to 144 frames a second, then you're going to get significantly reduced stutter and tearing. And because you've got 144Hz refresh rate, games feel really fluid and responsive. And this is the thing that I really want you to understand about this monitor. It's never going to succeed if you want something that's really good for image. But if you want to have a really nice feeling in your games, make it feel really responsive and genuinely make it easier to play, then this is a brilliant, brilliant monitor. Playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was an absolute pleasure. Playing Far Cry 4 was an absolute pleasure. Both first person shooters running at about 120 frames a second on average, maybe slightly more or slightly less. FreeSync meant I got less stutter and less tearing. And if I wanted to play any other sort of games, you don't get such a benefit, um, but you still do get a benefit. And that fluidity is really nice and easy to see and feel, depending on whether you're using a keyboard and mouse or a controller. Genuinely, gaming experience is very, very good. And this sort of brings me to the conclusion, really. It is a monitor that's available for about £200 or even slightly less at places. 
And bearing in mind my first monitor like this was a 120 hertz, 24 inch, 1080p monitor, and it didn't have FreeSync or anything, that cost me 270 pounds. So to see a monitor now that you can get for less than 200 pounds, obviously if you're in the US, the uh, US equivalent of that, it's very impressive. And if you have an AMD card, then it's an absolute steal. And if you have an NVIDIA card and you're not that fussed about G-Sync, it's still worth getting this because in the future you might change your mind or in NVIDIA you never know, might start supporting FreeSync. So, this wins the top purchase award. It's not the best monitor out there by a long stretch, but if you just want to play your games and have them really nice and fluid and responsive, this is a cracking, cracking option. So, thank you so much for checking out this video as always. If you want to see any more monitor reviews, uh, then just click the little I it's somewhere around here, and there are absolutely loads on the channel. And for other PC related videos, next videos that's coming shortly, the Skylake build. So stay tuned because I know a lot of you are waiting for that. Uh, if you like the video, then please give it a like. And if you've disliked it, have a guess, uh, give it a dislike and let me know what you thought of it. Leave a comment below or hit me up on at PCCentric on Twitter. Or if you're more of an image sort of person, it's now at PCCentric or just PCCentric on Instagram. So thank you so much for checking out this video as always. And I'll see you in the next one.